All right, what's going on you guys? Um, so this particular haul I'm going to talk about today is one that I've, I was really, really happy with. Um, ended up going down to uh, Dead Wax Records in Lenore, uh, North Carolina, and um, and I've talked about it on this channel before. Every time I go in there, I'm not necessarily expecting to find anything, but I always come out of there with just something amazing. And uh, this time was probably the biggest haul I've ever come out of there with, and it was just like, holy shit! Holy shit! Holy shit! I just kept pulling stuff out of the fucking racks, man, and it was just a uh, just a amazing day. Uh, and it was kind of a spur of the moment thing too, man. I was I, I left work on a Friday night or Friday afternoon. It was like, you know, I just kind of feel like going down there. I haven't been down there in five or six months. Let's just see what they have. And it was just like, wow! I'm so glad I came down here because I mean, as I've said before, this place is more like a, a punk rock store. I mean, in terms of metal. For the most part, you're going to have, you know, your straightforward stuff like your Judas Priest, Iron Maiden, Black Sabbath, which is fine, and I uh, definitely need to go in there and pick up some of that stuff, too. Uh, but, you know, I'm always going in there and finding something that was like, you don't expect to find in a store like that. And it's not a knock on the store. I absolutely love that place, but it's just I always come out of there with something great, and this time was probably the best haul I've ever had coming out of there. Um, which, I didn't come out of there with a lot of vinyl. I only came out of there with one LP, but everything else was... CDs and it was dirt cheap, man. And I'll get into that in just a second. Um, so uh, enough rambling. I'll go ahead and uh, we'll get started with it. So uh, we're listening to Survival Instinct, Helicost, out on uh, PRC Music, which is a fantastic label. If you haven't checked them out, I highly recommend you to do so. Uh, I believe this album came out back in 2014, maybe 15. I talked about it not that long ago, so I don't know why I can't remember. But Awesome Black Thrash out of uh, Quebec, I believe. So. If you're into that kind of thing, just definitely go check that out. Check out that label, too. I need to really start putting labels, links in the description. I've been fucking uh, forgetting to half the time, so we'll get back to it. Um, so the first one, I guess I'll just go ahead and show you the the uh, vinyl first, since, I mean, it's a record store, and that's kind of why I went there. Um, so I don't know what it is about this particular band that's just making me, you know, at first I was like, I don't know, it's just, it's okay, I guess. But the more I listened to it, the more it just fucking hooked me and grabbed me. And now anything I can get from this band, I will fucking buy it. So, And this was no exception. So I was walking in the store, and this is actually the very first thing I found. And I was like, uh, yep, that's coming with me, and I don't care how much money I have to spend, but this is coming out of here with me. So this is uh, Embalmer. Uh, shit, there was Blood Everywhere. This is the actually the compilation. There was originally a uh, There Was Blood Everywhere, just the EP, which comes on here, but the compilation features a, uh, a demo, the uh, Rotting Remains demo, and that's on here as well, so that's, I guess, basically the only difference. Um, yeah, I could not believe I found this in here. Like I said, I mean, this store's not known for really having underground metal, but uh, every once in a while, man, I'll find some shit, and this was uh, definitely one I was not expecting at all. So I love the... Uh, the uh, matte finish on this it's not got that fucking uh gloss to it it just makes it look so much better so much more macabre the artwork's obviously great and um uh, yeah man just uh, some great demos and eps on here um there's the back of it uh, so it comes on a gatefold as you can see there it looks really really fucking nice so you've got the band and some lyrics and apparently this version was supposed to come with a poster but it's not in here so i don't know if whoever uh Whoever the guy bought this from, you know, I'm like, uh, if you don't want the album and you're going to sell it, why wouldn't you put the poster back in here? Do you just like the way the poster looks? I mean, it's kind of fucked up, but it's whatever. Uh, but yeah, man, just, I don't know what it is about this band. All of a sudden, I'm just trying to get everything I possibly can from them. Uh, just a gnarly, fucking putrid, disgusting death metal out of Ohio. Can't go wrong there. So, uh, yeah, no poster, but it does... I mean, obviously, it's got the vinyl with it, so that's the only thing you really need. And it's just a beautiful red finish to it. I absolutely love that. Uh, one of the more aesthetically, visually pleasing things I have in terms of vinyl. And the last vinyl I bought, and the first one I bought this year, and it's like, like fuck, I mean, I've been kind of neglecting that whole part of the collection. But, you know, money is the issue, so that's why I've been buying a ton of CDs lately. So, uh, yeah, uh, really happy to have this one. I mean, there's tons of embalmer stuff out there, and I'm going to try to get as much of it as I possibly can. So I uh, was absolutely thrilled to fucking find this. So, hell yeah. And the only other two vinyl I saw that I really, really wanted were uh, some uh, Weed Eater albums I still don't have. And I really started to get them, but it was like after I started pulling out all this other shit, it was just like, I got to get this first. I got to save money. I'll come back for those other two. So it's whatever. Uh, yeah. I'm give me something to drink. So the rest of uh, everything else I have is on CD. 
sorry for all you vinyl nuts out there, but I mean, this is all I got. But I found some great fucking albums, and all of them except for one were only like I think like five dollars. That's like so fuck yeah, I'm taking that, I'm taking this, I'm taking that. I came out of there spending maybe right at sixty or maybe slightly under sixty bucks. I mean, every CD except for this one was five bucks, and this was only eight bucks. So this one is uh, from a band that I've been uh, meaning to get some of their shit for a while now, and like I say all the time, it's just it's not because I don't want to. It's just I don't always have the money, and there's so much stuff out there I'm still missing, and there's just so much new shit coming out. So it's whatever. But I finally got around to picking up some from this band, and uh, really happy I did. So we have uh, Father Befoul with uh, Desolate Gods. I believe this is their newest full length out on uh, Dark Descent. Came out in 2017, I believe. Um, so. Uh, if you're any, even remotely into uh, incantation, I mean, this is pretty much some straight up incantation worship. They definitely put their own spin on it, so I don't want to say it's just incantation and it's just a knockoff, because it's not. Uh, but it's a, just a fucking fantastic band. Definitely go check them out. Um, so I believe this is their fourth overall full length. The, yeah, I believe this is the follow up to 2012's uh, Revulsion of Seraphic Grace, which is a good album. Um, this is a very dense album. And uh, I think a lot of it has to do with, um, I mean, not that they didn't already have this sound, but a lot of it has to do with, you know, taking five years off, I guess, from the last album into this one. So, you know, good time to uh, kind of perfect your craft and uh, kind of add to it and put your own spin to it and just really focus on it and make a good one. And they definitely did. But like I was saying, a very dense album, very heavy, very ominous. Um, it's My only knock on it, it's, it's kind of short. It's only about 30 minutes, but I mean, it doesn't let up on you. Um, so you've got the, uh, the straight up, super fast blast beat parts you know the heavy you know fast riffing and then they'll also slow it down and do like you know very hook laden riffs but what i'm really impressed by this is they never let up on that you know judgment day end times doomy kind of vibe not doom metal but just kind of end of the world type of vibe going on here it never eases up no matter what type of riffs they're playing so very good album i uh, love the artwork which i believe is done by uh, alex uh shadron and it definitely paints a picture of what you're getting into when you're looking this up, or when you're listening to this album. And I believe Justin Stubbs, who does, uh, there's the inside, who does uh, guitar and vocals for this band, also did a, an art piece in here, which uh, I believe is this Rotting Virgin Mary. As far as my information tells me anyway, I mean, I believe it says it in here, but I'm pretty sure this is the one they were talking about so i mean it's really cool to see you know guys who are multi-talented and you know you can play guitar you can sing you can write music and you can do art you know it's, it's very very cool to see and uh, it makes me kind of jealous because i'm not very talented at fucking anything so but you know very impressive really good album definitely go check them out and i'm just fucking stoked to have something by father befouled and you know sort of local to me i mean they're down in atlanta i'm only about three hours away so hell yeah um, this one was one that's like, I don't know what it is about this project that I keep finding their music in this fucking store, and this is the second time I've been in there and found it, and I'm like, well shit, if I keep going in there, maybe I'll just be able to get all the full links that he's put out. Uh, so this is Aster, Nocturnal Poisoning. Uh, debut full length, uh, on Bloodfire Death. I believe this came out in 2002. Of course it's not gonna say. I'm pretty sure it's 2002. Um, yeah, man, uh, and as far as my information tells me, this is an uh, original copy. And uh, I'm wondering if this is the original jewel case because it's pretty fucking beat up, but I don't know if you can tell. But yeah, man. Uh, so how lucky do I get? For, I mean, I don't know what it is about going into that store. I find Zaster in there all the time. Uh, yeah, man. Really good debut. Uh, the atmosphere is great. I mean, awesome depressive suicidal black metal. I believe everyone knows that by now. Um, with this one, it's like the atmosphere is there, but it's not really come along and been you know kind of perfected like it would be later on like on a telepathic with the deceased or, a gen or subliminal genocide but it's definitely coming along i mean it's a debut so i don't really say too much about it there uh but just some brilliant work right here i mean scott's definitely you could tell at this point scott was definitely going to go places with his fucking music so yeah really awesome to fucking find this one um you know you can tell there's great things coming um and i don't know what it is about a gate through bloodstained mirrors it's just by far my favorite a song on this album track three right here um i've listened to that so much now it's almost becoming you know fucking redundant you know i don't want to fucking kill it for me but i mean it's 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 getting played quite often and i just fucking love that song so uh it's like prison of mirrors on the uh, subliminal genocide i don't know what it is about his songs about mirrors that just they're fucking great 
uh yeah but really fucking happy to find this one for sure it was just like wow can't believe this is in here and um so i got these i got those two and another i think i got a fuck <laughs> i think i got another one and i went to the checkout line he's like oh did you check out that pile over there i was like no i didn't and um so i ended up getting a whole bunch more shit and uh, i found this one in here so I was definitely kind of uh, adding to uh, my collection from this band. This is a Bottle Remains with uh, Let Us Pray. They're 1992 debut on Def Records. Um, and it's really cool. I'd almost forgotten that they, you know, through all the neoclassical type of, you know, you know, arpeggio sweep stuff they do, the really fucking technical shit they've been playing, I totally forgot that they played like, you know, just a straightforward old school type of death metal at one point. And uh, that's what you get on this fucking record. Um, which I, I love it, man. I mean, there's not really much Vital Remains I don't enjoy. And I love their, their fucking technical shit. I love their old school, just pummeling, riffy shit. It's just fucking great. I, everything they've done, pretty much. Um, so on this album, you've kind of got like a sinister or maybe a Mortis Skull type of vibe on this. Um, yeah, man, I mean, just... Fuck, just old school death, pretty much. I don't know where I was going with that. Uh, what kills me about them, they should have been really... They should have been a bigger band. Uh, I think they should have been, because um, I mean they put out so many classic albums, so many great albums. They should have definitely went up in terms of you know when you're talking about old school death, you're talking about your your Deicide, your Cannibal Corpse, Suffocation, all them type of bands, and it's like they are there but not quite up there as like I think they should be. Um, so I mean it's sort of like you know what happened is it because they've got you know some internal problem where they can't keep members, or is it being on you know European labels? early on or is it some other contributing factor i don't know what it is but i mean this band should have definitely fucking taken off a little bit better um so yeah man uh, really happy to have this one i think at this point now i only need like two more albums and i'll have everything they have and i also found this one their follow-up to that uh to uh let us pray uh into cold darkness so this one was like the um like the transition period so at this point you've got you know the intensity has come up uh, the technicalities definitely come up. You're starting to hear, you know, the crazy hyper fast double bass with all the, you know, amazing drum feels going in here. And I believe uh, Rick Corbett was definitely a uh, a good addition to this band at this point, playing drums. Um, but yeah, man, uh, definitely play more complicated riffs by this point. It's definitely you could tell where they were going to go. Uh, I believe the uh, the longer type of songs weren't going to come around until uh, Forever Underground, their next full length after this one. When uh, Dave Suzuki joined the band, and you know, kind of the rest is history at that point. But I like to call this their transition album, where they're going from like the old school vibe to uh, <clears throat> definitely more technical, uh, more uh, you know, uh, I don't want to say neoclassical, but it kind of has that vibe to it. You know, it's that all that shit's coming in on this fucking album. So, and then it would kind of be perfected years later when you you add Dave to the band, and you start kind of getting to the point of where you're doing you know, Dechristianize and Icons of Evil, where it's fucking solidified. So. Uh, yeah, that's what I call this one. A very, very good album. Again, I mean, there's nothing I don't like about Vital Remains. And, you yeah, know, this is the one I call, you know, the transition from where they were to where they would be. Uh, yeah, I just hate that it's on the fucking digipack, but it's whatever. I fucking needed to add it. Uh, this one is one that uh, my buddy Luke got pissed off at me because I was able to find this one. And I've been looking around for this for a while. I mean, I, I found it, but, I mean, it's always, like, at a minimum of 20 bucks on Discogs. And I've seen it upwards towards 60. And, you know, you kind of got some sketchy buyers on there. And a lot of it's just people being fucking scumbags and overcharging for it. Um, but, yeah, I was... Uh, this is the one that's probably the steal of the entire haul. And it was one that I was like, holy fuck, I cannot believe I actually found this in here. Again, for five goddamn dollars. Uh, yeah, I'm just staring at it. I can't believe I'm holding this in my hand. This is uh, the debut full length from Defeated Sanity. Prelude to the Tragedy, their 2004 release on Grind Ethic. And as I said, probably the biggest steal of the haul, I found out later on, this is an original copy of that album. So it was like, wow. You know, I mean, I don't know how much the original copies are going for or how rare they are, but it, you know, I've looked for it for a long time. I know Luke's looked for it for a long time, and it's just, yeah, it's just, I, I don't know how I got lucky enough to find it. So, uh, yeah, again, their debut full length. I mean, you still got that Defeated Sanity sound, but it's maybe not as quite as focused as it would be later on, on later albums, especially by the time you get to Chapters of Repugnance. Um, and you could argue that Marcus Keller wasn't quite as guttural a singer as, you know, you would have later with, you know, AJ or uh, Constantine or however you fuck you say his name, who sang on, um, uh, ah, God damn it, Passages into Deformity. 
uh, yeah, man, it's it's definitely a very solid album. It's it's still got that defeated sanity sound. It's just an album I've been looking for for a very long time. Uh, just some amazing technical brutal death out of Germany. I mean, I think most of you know Defeated Sanity by now, and I've been such a fan for a long time. It's just like, fuck yes, can't believe I finally have this album. So, yes, fantastic. Um, this one's one that I was kind of like, eh, I thought about not buying it because there was a couple other CDs in there that I wanted, and I just kind of, I was like, yeah, I doubt anyone will get these, so I'll come back for them, but it was like, I'm, I'm probably... It's not that I don't like this, it's just the format it comes on. So uh, I have a Gorgoroth compilation here. It's a compilation with uh, Destroyer and uh, Incipit Satan. And I really just don't like these compilations. I mean, it's 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 a, a quick way to add to your collection to kind of get more of those uh, you know, more of those albums in at the same time. But I would much rather just have them individually. But again, you know, the price is right. It's only five bucks, so I was like, what the fuck, hell with it, I'll just pick it up. Um, so this is the 2008 Nuclear Blast reissue, and uh, yeah, I mean, pretty much I desperately needed to add to my Gorgoroth collection, and the price is right, so I just picked it up, so it was just kind of like, it was a win-win, pretty much. Um, so uh, in terms of both of these albums, I probably prefer Destroyer a little bit better. I mean, it's just got kind of more of that straightforward, old-school kind of black metal sound. I don't know if I call it old school, but it's, it's definitely more in that traditional black metal sound. But that being said, I've been listening to Incipient Satan a lot lately. Um, there's just something about that. I mean, it's just got a weird vibe to it. It's got the, all the spoken word parts to it. And um, an excerpt of X, I can't stop listening to that song. It's just, it just drones on and on, and it's just, the riff to it is just so amazing. I just don't know what it is about that. I just keep listening to it. It's just, I'm about to fucking kill myself on some fucking Gorgoroth if I don't quit listening to this album, but... It's whatever, but I mean, again, you know, we would much rather have the uh, the uh, originals, you know, individually, but it's, I needed to add to Gorgoroth, and I only had the one other album, which is uh, Antichrist, so it's like, yeah, we've got to get some stuff. So, uh, you got a little bit of uh, art in here, but I mean, there's really nothing else to it. you got band photo, and that's really all you get, which it's a compilation, so I can't really knock it too much, so it's whatever, but still happy to have it. Awesome. All right, getting into the last two. Uh, this is one, another one I've been trying to get some of their stuff too, and it's just kind of been slipping my mind and been jumping onto some other stuff. Uh, this is uh, Bastille Mockery with uh, Slaying the Life, their 2007 album on Season of Mist Underground. Uh, Black Thrash out of, did I say Sweden? I believe I did. If I didn't, they're Black Thrash out of Sweden. Uh, this is the final full length they ever put out before they split up, and uh, I mean it was a really good album to go out on, and uh, another original copy. I don't know what it is about getting original copies, it's fucking pretty cool. Um, so if you don't know what they sound like, it's kind of like a cross between um, Sadistic Execution and maybe Sabat, so I kind of get that vibe from them. Um, so yeah, again, another, uh, it's their last album they ever put out, if you don't want to count their splits, their last full length anyway. And it's just, it's pretty much, you know, straightforward Black Thrash. I definitely prefer their earlier work a little bit more. Uh, but this one is a, um, it's not a stinker that they fucking just, you know, left in the toilet before they left. So, I mean, they definitely can put out some good shit. So, uh, so this has uh, 11 tracks on here, technically. But then you've got, like, 54 tracks of silence before you have a hidden track. So it's like, oh my god, I mean, I get you're trying to do the whole 666 thing, but it's just a little bit fucking, it's a bit much. I mean, the tracks of silence are only like four seconds long, but Jesus fucking Christ. But anyway, there is a hidden track on here at track 66 called Master. And uh, it's one of those that'll kind of scare the shit out of you because I listen to the whole album and then I'm like hitting the silent tracks. I'm like, all right, skip it all the way. And uh, so I think I skipped it up to like, you know, 55 just to kind of still feel like, ooh, I'm finding something hidden. And uh, once it gets to 66, I'm sitting there waiting and waiting and waiting, and it never came on. And finally, when it does, it just, it takes so long to get to it, it just scares the shit out of you because the music just kicks in immediately. There's, like, no lead into it. It's just immediate blasting. It's like, ah, fuck! You know, you're just not ready for it. So, but yeah, man, a really solid album to go out on. I'm really glad I picked this one up. So, I'll get more of their shit. Definitely like the earlier shit better anyway. So, there you go. And last one. Damn, I didn't think I was going to get through this this quick. So uh, we have an album from a band that, I mean, I've been listening to so much of their later shit recently, trying to get into it, that I've almost forgotten that their earlier work was so fucking great. And, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, after listening to this, I'm like fucking, yeah, I don't know why. I was just thinking like, yeah, it probably won't be that good. I mean, I've heard it before. It's just been a while, and I've kind of forgotten what it sounded like. And I was like, yeah, I'll just get it. 
And it was like, fuck yes, I'm so glad I did. So we have a Belphegor with Goat Ride Flesh Colt. Their fifth full length on Napalm Records, I believe. This came out in 2005. Just amazing Black Death from Austria. And again, another original copy. And like I was saying, it's it's been a while since I've listened to them. I've been trying so hard to get into their newer shit, and it's just not been working. That I, I mean, it's I, I haven't listened to this album in probably ten years, maybe something like that. And it was like I had forgotten all about it. Sounded this fucking great, which that's on me, man. But whatever. Um, yeah, I mean, I just I I can't believe I've been missing out on this one for so long. So, I mean, just, I mean, what are you going to say? Jesus Christ, the riffs are fucking epic. Uh, superb guitar work. Uh, Torturer uh, from Bethlehem is doing his second stint with the band on uh, drums, and it's just, I mean, he he's definitely fucking kills it in here, man. Great songwriting, great structure, great performances, and uh, I love the fucking censored cover. They actually put it in here, so it just kind of, it slips in. So there's a censored cover, and here's the uncensored one. Because, oh my god, somebody might see that and be offended. Like, fuck you, you fucking piece of shit. Can't handle it, don't fucking look at it. Um, yeah, man, it's, it's fucking ridiculous they would actually have to have that in here. But, I mean, it's it's kind of funny and just great at the same time. So you got some band photos and shit like that in here. There you go. I didn't show all of them, but it's whatever, you get the picture. But, yeah, man, uh, one of their better ones, I think. I mean, it's, it's definitely up there for me. And um, I really need to go back and start listening to the earlier work again and just say fuck it to the newer stuff. So yeah, Belphegor, go right Flesh Cult. And I'm hoping I'm going to be able to see them on the uh, Devastation on the Nation tour uh, with uh, Dark Funeral, Incantation, which I would love to see. And I've been wanting to see them for years. Uh, Hate's playing on it. Uh, Veil of Nath and Nightmare, I believe. So I I'm definitely going to try to check that out especially because it's coming to Asheville like holy shit 45 minutes away I can do that uh, so yeah man uh, really good haul I uh, was not expecting to find any of this shit and I will definitely be heading back down there soon if any of you are in the area I highly recommend you check out Dead Wax Records in Lenore a uh, fucking superb store I just love the vibe the atmosphere in there There's, I always find some good shit in there even if it's just one or two things I'm always finding something I want and I've been needing so uh, yeah definitely go check that out but don't be buying the shit I want or I'll fucking kick your ass all right, sorry, uh, that's it for me. Uh, I'm going to probably start doing the vinyl collection videos here soon. Probably the next video will be that. Uh, I've got a tape update still to do and uh, another collection update. I want to get knocked out here soon, but we'll see about that. But thank you guys for watching and checking this out. Uh, check out the links below. Uh, definitely go visit Dead Wax, at least on Facebook, if you're not from the area. Or go visit them in person if you are. I mean, just a great place, and uh, I love going in there. It's just amazing, amazing. I love it. Uh, so that's it, man. I will see you next time.